Okay, Tyler, we'll start with you. All right. Well, good morning. I don't know uh, who all we uh, have on. Is it? I see uh, Lindy there. Uh, you get to pick up the, uh, the token for waking up the earliest. Um, but good morning, welcome. My name is Tyler Takel, um, and I'll be telling you a little bit about myself, um, my path in the energy industry, and then um, we'll hand it over for some questions, hopefully. Let's see if I can. Let's not do PowerPoint Live. All right. Let's see if I can if I can share my screen. All right. All right. Can y'all see that? Oh yes. All right. So um, a little bit about myself and my connection to LCISD. I am a proud uh, alum of BF Terry High School, graduated in 2008, um, and then went off to school in Indiana at Purdue University and graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Chemical Engineering. And uh, immediately upon graduating, started at Exxon Mobil and worked in our development company, working on large scale capital projects uh, for the first year. I spent um, time supporting um, the Middle East and Asia, uh, so got to visit places like Qatar um, and Indonesia, and I was doing project management and construction engineering. And then um, after that, I got assigned to a project in Alaska, the uh, Point Thompson uh, project, developing natural gas on the North Slope. I got to spend two years there with ExxonMobil, and then after that, I decided I love school so much, decided to go get an MBA from Harvard Business School for two years, um, and then upon that I, uh, graduation, I decided to re-enter the energy industry. Um, took a, a slight turn though, went from public to private. Um, I went to work for a company called Hillcorp Energy Company, and I did operations and reservoir engineering um, there. And then uh, beginning of this year in January, I moved over to our sister company, Harvest Midstream. Uh, working in corporate development and acquisition, acquisitions and divestitures, uh, which is essentially looking at um, companies as well as projects and assets that we can go acquire and bring under and start operating, um, as well as uh, Harvest Midstream looking at acquisitions within the true midstream space. I also um, help out uh, our owner who owns both Hillcorp and Harvest, Jeff Hildebrand, um, has a private equity arm and so I'm helping out with energy transition initiatives and investments um, that span the entire energy transition universe, um, but looking at potentially some alternative investments in there. Um, and so where I've worked, that's kind of like I said, where, where I'm at right now, I'm currently in Houston, Texas. Uh, Hillcorp is a Houston based company, operates all over the US. We'll get into that a couple additional slides. And then the bottom right um, is a picture of, of my family, my pride and joy. Um, been married for seven years to Shannon, beautiful wife and a foster uh, alum, also LCISD, and currently have three kids. And this picture, I think, sums up their personalities with a very uh, serious and sometimes pouting uh, three-year-old named Jackson, um, a vivacious uh, five-year-old in Kennedy, and then a uh, garbage disposal in Brooks. Um, so that's a little bit about who I am and what I've done. Um, I'm gonna jump into I'm not sure how familiar people that are on this presentation are with the energy industry. Um, I have right now, most of my experience has been in oil and gas, and that's essentially what I'm calling the energy industry right now. And we'll get into things outside of oil and gas. Um, but if you're not familiar with the energy industry, um, essentially it starts with upstream, which is essentially finding and producing the oil. And once you get that oil and gas out of the ground, Midstream is the transportation arm um, that transports it, stores it. It's the logistics. Think of it as a toll road or a FedEx or UPS that gets it from the source to the downstream, which is petrochemical manufacturing, refining, um, different chemical plants that actually turns that raw input, whether it's natural gas or crude oil, into finished products. And then Midstream comes back in and transports that for those finished products um, to the consumers and to marketers. So whether that's gasoline going to your gas station, um, whether that's natural gas going to a power plant to generate electricity or to heat your home, or chemicals um, that ultimately get made into plastics and all kinds of things that we use. 
And so Hillcorp is predominantly and almost exclusively focused on the upstream side and then Harvest Midstream as the name entails um, is playing in the midstream space um, on both sides uh, of that. So who is Hillcorp? Um, Hillcorp is likely the, the large company you may have never heard of. Um, so we're a, a top 10 independent oil and gas company in the US and that's based on both really production and reserves. And so we've had a tremendous story of growth um, really for the entire history, but the uh, past four and a half years that I've been here. So right now we are, um, I think, number seven um, with independent oil and gas, so right up there with uh, Marathon and EOG. Um, but the thing that makes us unique is that we are a private company, and so we're the largest um, private oil and gas company um, in the U.S. And so we have just over 3,000 employees, mainly based here in Houston. Uh, and then we have a secondary headquarters um, in Anchorage, Alaska, and then we have various field locations, as you can see um, on the bottom left. Uh, and then production stats, we produce um, just over 360,000 uh, net barrels of oil equivalent a day, so that's oil and gas combined. Um, I think some interesting things to note, we have five core principles, um, but the, the three that I wanted to touch on is integrity, do the right thing, and so we drive a lot of autonomy um, to everybody in the organization and we're actually relatively flat um, and part of the the right thing um, doing the right thing not only at work but it also is giving back to the community and so we have um, it's like a lot of companies but i like the uniqueness of our hillcorp giving program is that um, they encourage you and they match the donation that you provide um, and then what i really like about working at hillcorp uh, or when i did work at hillcorp uh, past year um, was the innovation get better every day and so you have a lot of ownership and autonomy and so from that you get to steer your own career and your own work environment and you get to continue to challenge the status quo and uh, get better um, so that's one thing that I really really enjoyed working for a private small companies were lean or entrepreneurial and then the thing if you have heard of Hillcorp uh, might be from the news and the press that we get uh, about every five years um, but one of our other core principles is alignment is when Hillcorp wins, we all win. Um, and so we have an annual bonus target that everyone in the company gets the same percentage. So we're aligned on that. So when Hillcorp um, achieves the goals, all the employees do. And then um, something unique about Hillcorp compared to other places I've worked is that um, Hillcorp and Harvest has five year uh, big, hairy, audacious goals called BHAGs. Um, and if and when we achieve those, which are uh, relatively uh, difficult to achieve, like doubling the size of a company um, in five years. Uh, but we get a, a, a great uh, reward um, and prize that comes with that. And so in 2010, um, when we uh, achieved our, our success, um, we were all given the option to get a new car. That was actually before I, I joined uh, the first two. Um, and then Dream in, in 2015, uh, again, doubling the size of the company on both a production and value. Um, got a, uh, the employees got a cash prize of $100,000 uh, and that's all the way from the field operator up to the CEO and then right now we're working towards um, our northbound 275 at the end of this year um, and we actually just uh, uh, hit that um, and we're finalizing that but um, that will be a $75,000 bonus um, for everybody in the company and so um, with our unique structure um, both compensation as well as how we work uh, we've gotten various uh, awards um, throughout uh, best places to work and with our philanthropy. So that is Hillcorp. Um, Harvest is the sister company um, of Hillcorp and it was founded in 1993. Um, it started out essentially to help support Hillcorp and bring their oil and gas and bring it to market. So be that transportation arm for Hillcorp, um, but has since expanded and is an, now an independent company and has been expanding the third party um, business. And so we operate in uh, four different geologic areas, the Texas Gulf Coast, which is Texas, Louisiana, um, the Appalachian area, which is Ohio, Pennsylvania, um, and then the Four Corners area of Colorado and New Mexico. And then we have a, a very large presence in the state of Alaska. I'm not gonna read all the stats, but we have thousands of miles of pipe and move a lot of oil and gas. Um, and our mission is to uh, safely and responsibly deliver energy for the betterment of our employees and our communities. And again, uh, we have the same five core values um, as Hillcorp since we have the same owner and uh, some of the same leadership with integrity, urgency, ownership, um, alignment, and innovation. So very much enjoy um, working for uh, both of these companies. Um, I think there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity there. Um, as it applies to kind of careers, 
um, just high level. Um, I have Hillcorp and, and Harvest on here. So I am a chemical engineer. And so that's kind of my background has been doing um, the engineering and then now doing a little bit more on the finance side, uh, leveraging my MBA. But uh, we have um, engineering from Reservoir, which is finding oil and gas molecules to operations safely and efficiently getting it out of the ground and running um, our, our businesses and then have a, an entire army of finance and accounting um, to work through all the contracts and support all of our operations, but also corporately um, to steward um, our, our cash flow and our balance sheet and income statements. And then within operations, we have engineering, but there's also um, an entire company uh, essentially within the company, which we call asset teams at Hillcorp that are running these assets on a regional level um, that includes uh, our field operator up to foreman and our operations manager. And then um, in oil and gas, you need the rights to produce those. And so we have to deal with um, landowner and mineral owners. And so working out those contracts and managing that um, is, is a large part of our business. And then um, obviously on the environmental health and safety EH and S um, to do what we do since we are working um, in a, a heavy industry with uh, heavy equipment, um, keeping everybody safe and protecting the environment. So we have internships at both both Hillcorp and Harvest, um, and there's um, a lot of autonomy that comes with it. And I think that's mainly one the way we are built, but also because of the size of our company compared to a Fortune 100 company like Exxon, which is a little bit more process oriented um, and has a little bit more structure and rigidity, which I think is a great thing. Um, we're on the other side, so if you want to be nimble um, and have a lot of gray lines and autonomy um, and a fluidity in your day to day, um, then an internship here would be a great thing. Similarly, on Harvest, we have similar things. I might say the one thing that's uh, slightly different or an additional piece is on the commercial side. Since we are dealing with counterparties on both receiving the product, the oil and gas, and then also um, getting it to uh, our customer on the downstream, whether that's a refinery or uh, an end, end user. Um, we do a lot with contracting and business development, and so there's um, a lot of opportunities and careers within that as well. So I want to talk about the industry uh, then and now. I think I have, yeah, about a couple minutes. So why I went into the energy industry, um, number one, um, energy power civilization. That's why I was excited to go in it. Um, everything we do um, revolves around energy from the lights that we're using right now to running the internet and our computers um, to getting the gasoline so I can get to work today, as well as it advances our standard of living. And so when you have energy, you can increase your manufacturing and then run the servers at, at Google with the electricity. Um, the other thing was big challenges. Um, it's at the forefront of technological innovation, how to extract oil that's a mile underwater and then another mile underneath the earth. And to do that at, at the time was essentially the same cost as a gallon of bottle of water um, is pretty phenomenal. And everything um, I did both at Hillcorp and even more so at Exxon at a multinational uh, was big impact. So you're talking about billions of dollars. So add some zeros behind what you're dealing with. And so that's cool. Um, big challenges, big problems. And the other selfishly was uh, there was lucrative pay. And so 2009, Exxon was the number one uh, company on the Fortune 500 list, um, and uh, the pay was commensurate. And so things definitely have changed, um, but why I'm excited for the future, why I'm still excited to be in the energy industry, is energy still power civilization. And so we need to maintain that civilization, that a standard of living that we have, as well as continue to help um, other countries continue to industrialize. Um, and fossil fuels, I believe, will play an important role in that. It will be a different role, but an important role. And then big challenges. Um, climate change and how to tackle a low carbon future um, is front and center and very relevant. And so how to balance um, getting clean and affordable um, energy is the really the next big challenge and I think the next uh, grand challenge for uh, this generation. And then the, the really thing is we, we haven't been here before. We're in uncharted territory and so the solution has not been developed. Um, so we need all hands on deck. We need solar, we need wind. Um, we need oil and gas to continue, um, and we ultimately can't afford to fail. Um, and so with that, I believe I'm at my 15 minutes. Um, and so I was going to say the world is changing. Um, I think you all know this, but I'm going to wrap up um, with uh, answering the question of what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, and we can handle some questions at the end. But big thing is dream big and don't be afraid to fail.
Great information. I don't know if you're going to have any questions. Nina, do any of your kiddos have, have questions? So where's your pool? How do you how do you maintain a pool for your uh, for your companies for those interns? How do I maintain a, an internship pool? How so did we, your, right, right. We uh, we recruit um, at most of the uh, the four year colleges, A um, uh, and M, um, UT, University of Houston, and so we're on campus in the fall. But also our applications are are online and open to anyone and all. And so best thing to do is get in contact with me or, or anybody within the company um, to show interest, start that dialogue um, and then go from there. But if you're at a, a Texas university, uh, you'll probably see us at the career fair, but definitely take the initiative and reach out to us. Awesome information, beautiful family. Thank you, Tyler. Next we have Michelle Nota who just got married and I I think your name is Kirby now. Michelle. You. Sorry about that. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> All right. Let's share my screen. OK, can you all see my screen? Yes. OK, great. All right. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be speaking to you guys today um, for this energy career fair. Um, as Ms. Tomas uh, noted, my new married name is Michelle Kirby, but um, when I attended LCISD, I was Michelle Noto. Um, just a quick uh, agenda of what we're going to speak about today, a little bit of background in education on myself, um, how I got to where I am today, uh, what is a petroleum engineer, um, a little bit about my current company, Diversified Energy, uh, what it's like working for Diversified, how you could become an employee at Diversified, and then some tips for future energy professionals. Um, as, as you mentioned, I did just get married, so no kids yet, but we do have a dog uh, there in the photo, and you can see uh, that's my husband, Chris, and uh, my dog, Bailey. So background in education myself, I was born and raised in Richmond, Texas. I attended Foster High School, class of 2010, uh, was pretty involved there with band, cross country, track, and, and other organizations. Um, I then moved on to Texas A&M University, class of 2014, where I received my Bachelor of Science in Petroleum Engineering. While at A&M, I was also very involved in different groups, uh, both professional organizations and other um, in October of 2019, uh, I obtained my professional engineering license um, in the state of Texas. And then <clears throat> I wanted to share with you guys, uh, you know, why engineering? And, and that's such a good question. A lot of times I feel you have um, either, you know, family that was in oil and gas or um, different things like that. But for me, it was just I knew from a pretty early age that math was not only my favorite subject, but the one that I was the best at. Um, so looking at careers that kind of um, hinged on that that desire and that passion of math. Um, I put a little funny meme there that my friends always <laughs> joked with me about while I was in college. Um, it's, I'm an engineer spelled three different ways, all incorrectly, um, but no, I, I'm good with math. <laughs> and although that's true, I think I think that's why I chose to go into engineering. Uh, but you do have to spell. Don't don't get me wrong on that. <laughs> I, I write more than I do math at, at my actual job. So how did I get where I am today? Um, like I said, I loved math. So when I was applying for college, um, just kind of had to choose what in engineering I wanted to go into because I knew that's the route I would like to take. Um, but I didn't really know much about petroleum. Like I said, I didn't really have family in it, um, but I decided to go down that route um, with the thought that if I didn't enjoy it, I could switch into a different uh, field if I wanted. Um, but the summer before I went to college in 2010, um, I had a small two-week internship with a company called Auker Solutions. At that company, they they build a lot of um, really great technology and things for the oil and gas industry, and I was just blown away. Um, I was very interested in what they had to, to show and say, and uh, so it made me feel good that perhaps I was choosing the right path for myself. 
then I went to college and um, after every year of college, so after freshman year, sophomore and junior, I had summer internships with New Field Exploration, um, doing different things, production, drilling, um, operations in, in, in Oklahoma, Texas and in Colorado. So, so that was a great experience and again, solidified the fact that I actually did enjoy petroleum engineering and that I was in the right place. So after graduation, I then uh, took a job with ConocoPhillips out of Houston, Texas um, as a well integrity integrity engineer. But what you'll find in the oil and gas industry is that properties tend to be sold and bought by different companies along the way. So in 2015, Tanos Exploration bought the fields I worked at Conoco. And so I decided to go and take a job with them and kind of follow the field and um, that I had been working. Um, so at Tanos, um, I definitely grew over the, you know, the almost six years that I was there in different positions, ending in 2021 as the VP of Production Engineering. Although, like I said, things get bought. And so um, some of our properties at Tanos then got bought by Diversified Energy. And I was offered a position there to, to uh, move to Diversified and grow their engineering department because historically they didn't really have one. Um, so I decided to take that opportunity, move over to Diversified um, in October of 21 this year um, as Director of Production Engineering. So I haven't been there very long, um, so still learning myself, but uh, so far it's been great. Um, I definitely couldn't have predicted the path that's uh, been for my life thus far, and so I have no idea where I'll go next. But what I will say is that I know the energy industry provides limitless opportunities for young professionals like yourself. So just a quick um, background, and, and Tyler did a great job of showing you kind of oil and gas industry as a whole, but specifically, what is a petroleum engineer? Um, it's a field of engineering focused on maximize the, maximizing the economic recovery of hydrocarbons or oil and gas. Um, there's, in my mind, on the upstream side, four main disciplines of engineering or petroleum engineering that you can go into, reservoir, drilling, completions, and production. Um, my experience has been mainly the last two completions, um, but definitely heavy on production. Um, so some of you might think of petroleum engineering as the picture in the middle there, which I got to do at one of my internships um, in the summer, but with Newfield, but it's really not. It's more about uh, the, the top and bottom picture. Lots of graphs, lots of spreadsheets, lots of data um, and analyzing, and uh, that's more of your day to day as a petroleum engineer. <clears throat> Some important skills and requirements that I have seen through my career and what I think are important uh, to becoming a petroleum engineer are first, of course, you have to have an engineering degree. Um, does it have to be petroleum? Absolutely not. As Tyler mentioned, you know, he's chemical. You can, I've seen mechanical and a lot of different um, engineering programs that train you to be a petroleum engineer if that's the path that you decide to take. Um, critical thinking and analytical skills are very important. Teamwork. Budget planning, project management, economic evaluation, logistics. Um, it, it's crazy to think, you know, you go into engineering because you like math, you like design, but a lot of my job uh, day to day is really logistics. There's so many different people, vendors, uh, companies involved in a project that it's more about timing and planning things out. Um, time management skills, at least in my uh, career, has been very important as I've I've always had a large area of responsibility. So you really have to prioritize your projects. Um, and then public speaking, you know, you have to be able to to write well, speak well, so you can present your ideas to management and and to get projects moved along. OK, so now I'll get into a little bit about my current company, which is which, as I mentioned, I haven't been there very long. Um, it's been a very enjoyable experience so, so far, but of course, I'm still learning about uh, the company um, as we go. Um, Diversified Energy is an independent energy company focused on acquiring and, enhance, and enhancing primarily natural gas assets and related midstream infrastructure in the U.S. onshore. They're headquartered in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm actually in Alabama this morning. Um, I, I live and work in Tyler, Texas, but uh, travel all around to our different offices and, and field operations. <clears throat> they are publicly traded on the London Stock Exchange. Um, historically, they have been a Appalachia-based production company. Um, so if you can see in the map here on the bottom right, that's tons of wells and, and a lot of our assets that have been in Appalachia. So Kentucky, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio. <clears throat> but just recently in 2021, 
they expanded into Louisiana and Texas and making up what they're calling their central region. So you can see the, the map on the left where you see wells and assets that are in Louisiana and into Texas. So that's when I joined Diversified as they were stepping into an area that they weren't uh, that was unknown to them, and they needed some expertise on people who have worked in that area. Um, they also were scheduled to close another acquisition in Oklahoma in December, uh, so this month. Um, so that's just going to continue growing our company in the central region. Diversified is, uh, has about 80,000 wells onshore U.S., which is the largest number of onshore U.S. wells for any company, um, and continuing to grow. So Kind of kind of crazy to think, you know, you always think of Exxon or, or the Conocos whenever you think of large oil companies, but Diversified actually has the, the greatest number of well count in the U.S. at this point. And they're a production focused company, so they grow by acquisition rather than drilling. So, so that's a unique uh, mindset and style for them as well. So a little bit about my current role, uh, responsibilities and then some challenges. <clears throat> So I was hired as director of production engineering for Diversified to not only direct and lead, but to grow the production engineering department. As I mentioned, historically up in Appalachia, they just didn't have the need for um, production or petroleum engineers as much as um, what they know that they need in the central. So, so we're trying to grow the engineering department and really um, expand it. Um, I work with multiple groups in the company, you know, for projects you have to deal with land, operations, accounting, IT, finance. Um, so it kind of goes back to the teamwork aspect of the skills you need. You, you're never, you know, in your only, you're never working just in your group, you're across the whole company. Um, something that I do daily is monitor production on the wells to ensure optimal performance. However, with 80,000 wells, you definitely don't look at them every day. Um, but then a the big part is whenever a well is down, write procedures and AFEs for projects um, to help fix the wells. Um, focusing on efficiency, cost, and of course, safety. So some challenges. Um, you, as an engineer, uh, or at least a petroleum engineer, you can't always see what you're working on. Um, some of your projects are at the surface, while some are down hole inside the well. And so you might be working 10,000, 15,000 feet underground um, and trying to figure out what you have going on. So that can be a, a challenge, but it's, it's an exciting challenge. And as technology evolves, um, there are better ways to try and figure that out. I've actually ran multiple cameras down in wells to, to see what's going on. Um, data availability and format, that, that's huge in probably most industries, but here when you have wells that might've been drilled in early 1900s and the data has, uh, it's all paper, it might be scattered around. So, you know, trying to, to learn the histories on the wells can be difficult, um, but then also, you know, just the granularity of data and if it's not available to you in an easy format, it's hard to work with. Um, challenges for me, at least, uh, like I mentioned, large area of responsibility. Um, you have to manage your time and prioritize projects, um, and that's an ongoing process. And then uh, starting in about 2018, I became in a managing roles, and so just managing people is a challenge. Um, it's something that I enjoy, but it's not for everyone, but you, you, know, you always have to deal with different personalities and different uh, just environments and, and try to work with uh, it people that you have on your team. So working at Diversified, the hiring process for just a regular position is pretty standard across mo most companies. Uh, when a posi position is needed, it will be posted and advertised on sites like LinkedIn and Indeed. Qualified candidates would be um, interviewed and then once uh, someone is selected, an offer would be made and then background drug screening and other onboarding processes would take place. However, what would probably interest you guys the most are summer internships um, as you're looking at going into college and and creating uh, starting your career. Um, so at Diversified, uh, it's it's a bit of a different structure than than the company that we just saw from Tyler. Um, they're kind of new in that sense, you know, engineering is new. Uh, internships are new, but I was happy to find out that um, before I started at Diver Diversified, summer 2021 was actually the inaugural year of internship program for them. They had about six interns across the company, um, and I, I don't think it was as formal as a process as what you would see um, from a lot of other oil companies. Um, I think it was kind of like a afterthought, and they and they grabbed some interns kind of later in the year. 
However, um, as we start expanding engineering and getting a, a more solid process in place, I definitely see that to improve. And hopefully you will see us at career fairs um, sometime in the future. Um, and I have been told that the program is planned to double for next summer in 2022. So that's exciting. But definitely, I think the best uh, uh, course of action would be uh, to contact me and, and I can try to help out on uh, finding internships for you guys. Some of the benefits of working for Diversified, um, like most companies um, training, I think that they are very uh, of the mindset to invest in their employees to enable success. So if there's training that you want to better, better yourself and do your job better, um, they would usually approve that. Advancement is absolutely a huge thing. It's a bigger company, uh, lots of different divisions um, and groups. So you not only have a chance to advance in your line of business in your area of expertise, but you can also cross train and go to different groups if desired. Um, great benefits package, just like most um, decent sized companies have health, life insurance, uh, retirement, 401k and matches, um, paid time off and all those great things that make uh, your work life balance good. Um, they also have an educational assistance program. So if you're working at Diversified and decide you want to get your MBA or some other um, advanced education, um, they actually have a program to assist with the cost of that. And, and something that I see as a big benefit of working for Diversified is, um, although we're growing at a pretty exponential rate right now, um, it's, it's a disciplined growth. So all decisions made with a focus on the balance sheet to sustain long-term success. Um, the company is ran by mainly accountants, not necessarily oil and gas backgrounds. So they definitely have just the success of the company and cash flow in mind. And you can see I have a, a diagram there with the company values that I, I won't necessarily read to you all. I think that you'll have these slides to look at later, but um, some of the core company values at Diversified. All right, and then quickly, um, some tips that I see as uh, from my you know, somewhat short career so far, um, some tips for future energy professionals or for anyone of your age going into college and trying to decide what, what do you wanna do for a career is um, first and foremost, determine your interests and your strengths. Um, and then once you kind of have that path or, or those interests and strengths in mind, um, as you're choosing maybe your core classes or some elective courses as you finish out high school and as you go into college, um, focus on those classes that enhance those interests. So if you are more engineering minded or you like math, do that advanced math class that you don't need to graduate. Do the AP physics. Um, you know, there's computer science that I loved that I took in high school. There's all those different things that just give you a little bit of a head start as you going into college. And then um, choosing the, the appropriate degree path. So that's important. But like I said, when I chose petroleum engineering, I wasn't 100% sure that's what I would do for the rest of my life. Um, so go into it with trying to make a good choice, but don't stress that that's the only thing you can ever do. You can always change directions and there's no telling where your career will actually lead you with whatever degree that you get. Um, also getting involved in organizations, both professional and other. Um, while you're in college, while you're in high school, I think that's important. Um, I think employers like to see not only that you did well in school, but that you are well rounded as well. And then the thing that I think is the most important is internships or any work experience in your field as early as freshman year. I had a lot of friends that didn't feel freshman year internship was possible or that they were you know, necessarily needed it, ready for it, but that was probably the best thing that I have ever done is to get one that early and then stay with the same company uh, for the next summers as well. Um, and then just, you know, a little tidbit is I feel hard work and determination can really go a long way and put you as far as anything else. Um, I always say and think you don't have to be the smartest person in the room, um, but if you're the one that's going to work the hardest, then then you will succeed and you will go far. And so that's my tips for you guys. And uh, thank you again for having me. And if there's any questions, I'd love to take them. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Great information. We're going to go on and uh, start with Lindy. I did it too. Hi. <laughs> All right. I'll go ahead and share my screen. How did I get so big? <laughs> Do what? 
Okay, nothing in my picture is just bigger than usual. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I think no, um, Michelle is still sharing, so I think now okay. you should Great be. Great information, Michelle. Loved it. Loved Tyler's. I'm just so impressed. Uh, so mine's going to be far less technical information. So, and that's uh, okay. I need to share it's with okay. You. Yeah. So, like Miss Thomas said, my name is Lindy Flora. I um, this is my family. I am obviously the one in the middle. My husband Carson also works in the oil and gas industry, and then this is my one-year-old daughter Aiden. Um, I graduated from Lamar Consolidated High School a little over ten years ago. Um, grew up with Tyler, the first speaker on the call, as well as Miss Tomas's two boys. So um, it's a great place to grow up and go to school. After I graduated from Lamar, I went on to Texas A&M and got my bachelor's degree in communication. And then I stayed on um, and got my master's in human resource development. So the first two presentations you heard, uh, Tyler and Michelle are both on that technical engineering side. And I think that a lot of times when we focus on oil and gas, that's the number one thing that comes to mind is engineering roles, because absolutely that's what kind of keeps the lights on and keeps the business running for oil and gas. But um, I think one of the big areas of focus that people miss out on is that every single one of those companies needs human resources, they need accounting, they need finance, they need supply chain. So they need some of those less um, math and science technical roles. And that's what I'm excited to share with you guys today is some of those lesser known positions. Um, so my master's degree is in human resources. Um, again, like my two previous speakers, they both started out in the oil and gas industry and kind of moved their way through. I had a very different pathway to oil and gas. So I actually started, if my mouse will click now, I started in nonprofits. So while I was getting my master's degree, I worked for a small nonprofit um, in the Bryan College Station area, got some experience there. And then I moved on when I graduated to get, um, or I worked for a recruiting company. So something very completely different. It touched the oil and gas industry, but it's not something that I was super involved in. And then I actually moved to Denver, Colorado about three years ago. And that's when I started working for my current company, BPX Energy. And that's when I really got started in oil and gas. So I've been in the industry for about three years. So all that to be said, um, there's a lot of different pathways to getting into the in energy industry and um, encourage you to try as many things as possible. <laughs> and uh, see what you like best. And that's kind of what my path led me to the oil and gas industry. So currently I'm a talent specialist at BPX Energy. So a little bit about my company. Um, so I'm sure most of you who are watching the call have heard of BP, um, British Petroleum. They are a major, uh, they're a super major is what they're called. They're one of the largest um, oil and gas companies in the world. So my company, BPX, is actually a smaller company underneath that bigger BP umbrella. So um, like the previous two speakers, they were in the uh, private energy. I work in public, but in a smaller company underneath that public umbrella. So BPX, the biggest differentiator between BPX and BP, um, number one is we operate exclusively in onshore um, continental United States. So BP focuses on those big offshore platforms that you see at like Gulf of Mexico and all over the world. BPX, we operate ex uh, exclusively in what we call the lower 48, but more specifically, you can see in this picture here, all of our assets are pretty much in Texas. So we operate in the Permian, the Eagleford, which is in South Texas, and Haynesville, which is in East Texas and a little into Louisiana. So you'll notice that diamond up in the top left-hand corner in Denver, Colorado. So the other thing that differentiates us from BP is that BPX, our headquarters, is located in Denver, Colorado. So while BP is headquartered in Houston, we are out in Denver. Um, that was a conscious choice to move out there, and it's a huge part of our culture. 
Um, not just that Denver is a fun, exciting place to be, but we wanted to pull away from the Houston energy hub and start recruiting people who may not have grown up in the oil and gas industry, but can bring in some outside perspectives from different industries and help us transition our company into a more innovative and agile company. So we were located up in, or we are located up in Denver. Um, so this is just an image of our office. I think this does a really great job of kind of giving you a picture of the environment and the culture of my company. So you'll notice in this space, a lot of light, fun, exciting spaces. Um, and that's because that's a huge part of our company. We are innovative, we are entrepreneurial, we are young and fun and vibrant, and it's a really incredible place to work. You'll also notice in this picture, a lot of places for collaboration. Um, and that is a huge component of our company. We want everyone to get to know each other. We are fairly small and we have about 700 employees just in the BPX capacity underneath the BP umbrella. So we're fairly small, so you have the ability to get to know a lot of different people and collaborate and work together. And a lot of our office spaces lean towards getting people in spaces where they will connect and talk about their work and share ideas and come up with really fun and cool new ways of operating. So that's our company. So my job specifically, just to give you a perspective of something that's not necessarily like in that technical engineering uh, capacity. So I sit on what we call our people and culture team. Um, it's just kind of a new flashy way of saying human resources. A lot of times you're gonna see companies moving away from that human resource language. So in our company, it's called people and culture. Um, so on the people and culture team, what is the main goal? Our goal is to create a workplace where people can thrive. Um, and we acknowledge that thriving is different for everybody depending on your role. And so the team that I sit on, the impact team, specifically focuses on creating opportunities for these six attributes that we have um, targeted at BPX as the, the key attributes of what we look for. So we want people to be innovative, motivated, performance-driven, accountable, collaborative, and trustworthy. Um, and so we create different programs, different training opportunities where people can expand and grow in these specific areas. And then what I specifically do as a talent specialist is I make sure we have the right people in the right job with the right skills. Um, so a lot of what I do is kind of crystal ball thinking of what skills do we need for the future. Um, Tyler touched on this, but the energy industry is changing rapidly. Um, and there are skills that we need tomorrow that we don't have today. And so a lot of my job is finding out what those skills are and how we can develop and cultivate them within our company. So what skills do I need to actually do that? Um, so primarily what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is communicate and partner with people in our business. So I have a lot of, um, incredible strategic conversations with our engineering departments, on our development side, on our production side, like Michelle focused on. Um, and I talk to them about what their business goals are for the next year, what their plans are, what skills are needed, um, where they have gaps in their team where we can either recruit out for new people or build skills internally. Um, and then a lot of that requires me to get a little creative. So in the past year and a half, um, a lot of our budget for programs and opportunities was eliminated just with the COVID environment. Training wasn't necessarily something that we could do because we couldn't get people together. Everybody was spread out around their home um, in their different locations. And so getting creative on how we can provide development opportunities and training opportunities in um, the new kind of ways of working that we were operating in. Additionally, um, kind of tactical day-to-day -day things that I'm working on, I do a lot of project management. Pretty much everything that I do is project-based. So in the fall, I wrapped up a large workforce planning exercise where I met with every single strategic partner in our business, um, every head of that business and said, 
let's look at your organization. Do you have the right people? Are they in the right job? Do you need to add? Do you need to move? Do we need to develop and identify game plans of where that organization is moving and um, how they're going to get there? And so basically all those conversations I took away with millions of action items of what we were actually going to do to execute on those plans. And that was taking it to our recruiting team to recruit for um, campus internships, as well as experienced hires and how we're going to fill the open roles that existed. Um, it was working with our learning and development team to identify specific content that we were going to roll out in the coming year. Um, it was working with our reward team to identify who needs promotions, raises, things like that to make sure that we're properly incentivizing our top talent. And um, I analyzed a lot of that information. I also partner with our business to let them know kind of their vulnerabilities as far as where we see people retiring or having different succession planning conversations, where we see uh, potential risks of losing some of our most critical skills and how we can um, mitigate those risks by cross-training, um, recruiting new people, whatever that might be to make sure that we have, again, the right skills, the right people in the right place. So that's a little bit about my specific job that's a little bit different. Um, so as far as career opportunities, um, we have internship programs that run every summer. They're about 12 weeks long or 10 weeks long, I'm sorry. And a lot of those are focused on engineering and you'll see some of the different specific degrees that we recruit for and that's you know, petroleum, mechanical, chemical, computer. We also have internships for all of our different business functions like accounting, finance, HR, or people and culture, supply chain. Um, I put human resources on there twice. That was an accident, but you can obviously tell where I think the priorities lie. Um, and then the universities that we recruit from specifically are A&M, UT, Prairie View, Colorado School of Mines, and University of Oklahoma. That's a huge part of uh, basically where our alumni network is. So the majority of the people that work for my company kind of come from these schools. They're also schools in our backyard in Denver and in Houston. And I wanted to include this video. Let's see if my sound, sorry about that. There we go. Um, because I think that our past interns do a really incredible job of explaining more about our company and the culture. So I'm going to go ahead and play that to wrap up just an overview of who we are and what we do. And then I can open it up to questions. I know we had a few people join, so I'm going to kick off the video. If I had to describe my experience in one word, it would be supportive. I would use the word flexible. All of the interns and Anne and the buddies and the mentors and the managers have been super flexible to allow us to have an amazing summer. Innovating, that's the essence of what all of us interns have done, and uh, it's been such a great experience. I would say engaging. Opportunity. Fascinating. Exciting. Rewarding. A blur. <laughs> it's enabled. Yeah, absolutely. 100%, 110% enabled. I think the key thing about VPX that sets it apart is just how amazing it feels to be a part of the small community within the larger BP company. He almost has this uh, startup atmosphere. Everybody's super busy, super proficient, but it has the backing of an international energy company. About 700 plus people in this building, and from day one, everybody here is just like, hey, how you doing? You know, introducing themselves. It's really nice and refreshing to um, feel supported and helped by everyone. We are moving at such a fast pace here. They're always challenging you, but at the end of the day, they're making sure that you as a person are okay. The thing I, I learned is kind of like what happens if someone gave me all the tools, all the capabilities, and it was just like, well, what can you do? The first thing I got here, the first thing I heard was failing fast. Like they encourage you to try something out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You get up, you do something else. It's fine, just move on to the next thing. At least we try it, you know, 
if it doesn't work out, it wasn't meant to be, but there will be something else. This internship by far exceeded my expectations. Just that super hands-on experience and see, you know, drilling rigs and frack spread and tons of cool things. Getting to, you know, interact with the uh, really knowledgeable people in the field, including well site leaders, our contractors, everybody from the driller to direction people. They all just had a unique and uh, different perspective than what we have in the office. I think the biggest thing for me was it was surprising them how committed they are to reducing emissions. Three out of the 11 internship projects were focused solely on reducing emissions. You know, I think a big part of all of this is going to be how we take our old oil and gas processes and make them a lot cleaner and a lot better for the environment. So with my project really directly, you know, we're reducing a lot of emissions, so I just thought that was really cool and expected to have. This is company especially is a more sustainable oil and gas company and really fighting to reduce emissions while still providing the world's energy. I really could not be more amazed with this company and so uh, if anybody does have the opportunity to uh, have an internship here, it is not something to ask of. So you can tell I let them kind of do the heavy lifting of, of what the experience is like, but I think that that really um, hit on the culture of our company, um, the exciting opportunities that we have. And I think that you guys absolutely should in, uh, explore a career in energy. Hopefully that's what you plan to do. And if you are going to any of these schools, like Tyler mentioned, a great way to connect with us is on campus for recruiting. Um, we also have all of our career opportunities posted on um, the BP Careers site. So if you just go to bp.com and find their careers page, it's forward slash careers. That's where you can find all of our different opportunities. And then also I'll go ahead and put um, my information is up here. If you want to contact me, it's another great way we have wrapped up our recruiting for next summer. So typically what you're going to see in a recruiting cycle is career fairs in the fall that are recruiting for the following summer. So as you go off to school, um, like Michelle mentioned, with getting an internship as early as your freshman year, it's absolutely an opportunity that I would encourage if you can. Um, you want to go to those fall career fairs because typically that's where uh, we spend the majority of our effort and time focusing on getting those interns locked in for the following summer. So I don't know that there's anyone on here to take questions, but if anybody here has questions, love to answer them. Uh, thank you so much. This is, these are all amazing presentations. I, I am just floored at where you are at your young age. Thank you again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. And if y'all want to say something or talk, you can.